Hi, I'm Mark Parsamian. In this video, I'll be discussing decaying exponential functions and radioactive decay. The reading for this video is, in general, section 3.1, but this topic is not discussed in the reading itself. It's only discussed in the introduction to one of the exercises. The exercises for this video are 43 and 45 from section 3.1. Now I want to start by reviewing. In the video for homework 37, we drew the graphs of 2 to the x, 3 to the x, and e to the x. And we made general observations about the properties of that group of exponential functions, the functions that have the base b greater than 1. We noted their domain and range. The domain is a set of all real numbers. The range is the set of all positive y values. We noticed that those graphs have three distinctive points, the point 0, 1, the point 1, comma, b, and the point negative 1, comma, 1 over b. Let's go up and look at those on the graph. We also notice the end behavior. All three of the graphs go up on the right, that is their limit as x goes to infinity, is infinity, and all the graphs have horizontal asymptotes on the left with line equation y equals zero, so the limit as x goes to negative infinity is zero. The last bit of behavior that we noticed was that those graphs are increasing from left to right. That is, if x1 is less than x2, then the y value for x1 is less than the y value for x2. So all of these graphs go up as you go from left to right. There's another group of exponential functions. The group of exponential functions b to the x, where the base is a number between 0 and 1. As a typical example, let's build a table of values for this function, y equals 1 half to the x, and examine its graph. For comparison, we'll also build a table of values for y equals 2 to the x and show its graph. Now that table of values we've already made, let's make that quickly. So there's the table of values for y equals 2 to the x. Now let's make the table of values for y equals 1 half to the x. So when x is 0, the y value is 1. The y values are easy for the positive values of x. But when x is negative, the y values get a bit more complicated. There's our table of values for y equals 1 half to the x. Well, let's put these xy pairs on a computer drawn graph. Here's our original graph of y equals 2 to the x. And we have this red graph of y equals 1 half to the x. Notice some trends here. This graph has as its domain all real numbers because you can recall from our computations, there's never going to be an x value that causes one of these computations to not work. You'll always get a y value. So the domain is all real numbers. The range of the y values on that red graph is all positive y values. Notice a couple of other things. Uh, this graph has famous point, 0, 1, 1, 1 half. Hey, that's just the base. That's the b. And negative 1, 2. Well, hey, the number 2 is 1 over the base, 1 over 1 half. So those three famous points. Uh, notice the trend. The end behavior on the right is that the graph has a, a horizontal asymptote with line equation y equals 0. On the left end of the red graph, the graph goes up. And then finally, notice that this red graph is coming down as you go from left to right, whereas the graph of the blue function was going up as you go from left to right. 
So we can make a generalization about properties of another group of exponential functions, the ones that have the base b between 0 and 1. Those are called decaying exponentials. So the things that we just noticed about the graph of y equals 1 half to the x are true for all of this family of exponential functions. The domain and range. The domain is the set of all real numbers x. The range is the set of all positive numbers y. Uh, the three distinctive points, uh, x, y equals 0, comma 1, because b to the 0 is 1. Uh, x, y equals 1, comma b, because b to the 1 is b. And x, y equals negative 1, comma 1 over b, because b to the negative 1 is 1 over b. And then the end behavior, the fact that the graph has a horizontal asymptote on the right with y equals 0 as its line equation, tells us this. The limit as x goes to infinity of that function is 0. The graph goes up on the left, so that means the limit as x goes to negative infinity is infinity. And the fact that the graph is decreasing means that we have this. If x1 is less than x2, then y1 is greater than y2. Now, notice that the equation y equals 1 half can be rewritten. So here I use the fact that 1 over a equals a to the negative 1, a general fact of exponents. And then here I used another general fact of exponents, the fact that a to the b raised to the c is just a to the b times c power. Now rewriting the function this way, writing it as y equals 2 to the minus x, makes us think about transformations of graphs. We know that if we have a graph of y equals 2 to the x, we can get a graph of y equals 2 to the minus x by transformations. We can get the red graph by flipping the blue graph across the y-axis. So let's go up and look at those graphs again. Notice that the graph of the red function, y equals 1 half to the x, could be obtained from the graph of the blue function, y equals 2 to the x, by flipping the blue graph across the y-axis. Now, more generally, if the base b is a number that's greater than 1, and uh, the function y equals b raised to the rx power, that's going to be an exponential function, more generally, that function is going to be what's called an increasing exponential function when r is a positive number, and it's going to be a decaying exponential function when r is a negative number. So let's go back up. We could think of uh, the, the two examples that we've seen. y equals 1 half to the x power is the same as y equals 2 to the minus x power. So that's a decaying exponential function. One place where decaying exponential functions show up is in models for radioactive decay. So the decay of radioactive substances is described by this equation. Q equals Q0 e to the RT, where T is greater than or equal to 0. Now in this equation, the symbol Q subscript 0 is the amount of the substance at time 0. The letter R is what's called the continuous compound rate of decay, and it'll be negative because we're talking about decay, a decaying exponential function. T is the time in years, and the letter Q on the left side of the equation is the amount of the substance at time T. So here's a graph of Q versus T for radioactive de decay. Now notice that when, when time T is 0, We see that when time t is the number 0, the value of q is just q subscript 0. That's why that symbol is, is written that way. So there's a graph of a decaying exponential function, just the right side of it.
time greater than or equal to zero starts at this point, zero comma Q subscript zero, and decays approaching this asymptote. There's one more term I want to introduce. What's called the half-life of a radioactive substance is the length of time that's required for the substance to decay to half its original amount. Uh, so for instance, if the amount of substance at time zero is Q subscript zero, that would show up on this graph like this, and if the half-life was 35 years, that would mean that at time 35, the amount of the substance remaining would be one half of the original amount. Well, if that's the case, what happens if we wait another 35 years? We could think of time 35 as being the starting point. If we wait another 35 years, the time will be 70, and the quantity will have halved again. So if we started with an amount Q subscript 0 at time 0, and at time 35 we had half of that amount, then at time 70 we're going to have half of half of Q0. So we're going to have one quarter of what we started with. And if we wait another 35 years, till time equals 105, well then the amount of the the substance at that time will be one-eighth of what we started with. So that's the idea of half-life. Let's do some examples. In questions about radioactive decay, the questions are often about finding the half-life. So in this problem, we're told that um, a substance has radioactive decay, and we're given the value of R, and we're asked how long the it will take to decay to half its original amount. In other words, what's the half-life? Well, let's review our equation. Let's think about what terms we know and don't know. Clearly, we know the value of R. We don't know the value of Q subscript 0. And we don't know the value of Q. But we do know that we're interested in the quantity having decayed to half the original amount. And we don't know the value of t. But that's what we're supposed to find. We're supposed to find the half-life. We're supposed to find how long it will take. So we should solve this equation for t in terms of the other variables. I'll do that on the next page. So there's our equation solved for t. Now we're going to substitute in the values that we know. So we end up with this expression, ln of 1 half divided by negative 0.0001238. That's our exact expression. Now we can type that into a calculator to get an approximate answer. This is roughly um, 5,599 years. So the half-life of this substance is 5,599 years. If you start out with one kilogram of that substance at time zero, in 5,599 years you would have one half kilogram left. There's our answer using my usual style of getting an exact answer in symbols first and then at the very end typing numbers into a calculator. For the last example, we're going to consider a strontium isotope. It has a known half-life of 90 years. And the question is, what's the continuous compound rate of decay? Well, let's do what we did before. Write down the quantities that we know and don't know.
So the given information is that the half-life is 90 years. That means that whatever the original starting quantity is, which we don't know, the final quantity will be one half of that at time 90. Now, the other thing that's unknown is the value of r. That's the thing that we're supposed to find. What is the continuous compound rate of decay? We're supposed to find r. So let's solve our equation for r in, in terms of the other variables. So there's our equation solved for r in terms of the other variables. Notice the steps were very much like the steps where we solved for t. It was just in the very last step that instead of dividing by r to get an equation solved for t, this time we divided by t to get an equation solved for r. Now we'll substitute in our known values. And there is our result. The value of r written exactly is this expression, ln of 1 half divided by 90. A decimal approximation is this, minus 0 0.007702. Now why did I write that that way? The instructions were to find a decimal approximation rounded to four significant digits. That doesn't mean four decimal places, it means four digits once the digits start being non-zero. So there are my four significant digits. Notice that the value of r is negative because this is a radioactive decay. This is a decaying exponential function. That's the end of the example and that's the end of the video. Thank you.